Well, good evening. We're excited to see you for tonight. We're going to be um, presenting the Holden Evening Prayer for our first Wednesday in Advent. We'll be having this series, uh, this, uh, the Wednesdays, the first three Wednesdays in December. And it's, then we're pretty much in Christmas week. So welcome to Advent. Welcome to Holden Evening Prayer. It's always a special time. And um, we're glad you're here. We're glad you're online with us. Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church. Oh, 
so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. Oh, good evening. May grace and peace abound in you always. Amen. So the four candles that we light uh, can stand for many, uh, many different topics. And but the traditional is peace, love, hope, <coughs> joy. And then the fifth is the Christ candle that's lit on Christmas Eve. And, the, and so we are using the, the traditional version this year. And today we start with the concept of hope and what that means. So a reading from Romans 15, 12 through 13. The root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nation. In him the Gentiles will hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. A second reading comes from Psalm 85, 9 through 11. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. Amen. So we begin this night with hope. And we light the first candle in anticipation that there's a baby that is to come into the world. And the hope that that baby that is coming into the world is, is for all people and for all times. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew, and the New Testament was written in Greek and Aramaic. And the Catholic Church translated the Bible into Latin which was an inaccessible language with the exception of the priests and the very educated. So besides starting the Reformation, one of Martin Luther's biggest contributions was that he translated the Bible into German, into an accessible German language so that the majority of people could understand it and had some accessibility to the word of God. And he was one of the few who succeeded in doing this without being executed for heresy. Another one of Martin Luther's contributions, just so you all know, was that, was that of the Christmas tree and also of the Advent wreath. So when we have those in our home, we're being very Lutheran in doing so. A 
around the same time Martin Luther translated the Bible, the Bible was also being translated into English. And since then, the entire Bible has been translated into 704 languages and the New Testament alone into over 1,500 languages. And with that comes into play very carefully worded translations. But even with the carefulness and the scholar, scholarly translations, the words in the Bible do not hold the same meaning as they were meant to in the original languages. As we read the Bible through our own language, but not through the intent of the language it was written in, we lose a lot of the beauty of the language and the fullness and the richness of what these words in the Bible mean. Pretty much every word in the Bible is like that, but we will focus on hope tonight. Hope in the Old Testament basically had two meanings. The first was if you were to look backwards you could see where God is intersected in your life here and here and here. When you have bad times, you could look back and go, I had a bad time here and I made it through it because of God. And I had a bad time here and I made it through it because of God. And I had a bad time here. Thus, if I have a bad time now or later, God will be there. And that's what hope meant. And for the Hebrews, they could look back to uh, the exile and to the crossing of the Red Sea and to God keeping them safe in the wilderness wanderings, even though it lasted 40 years. And the other meaning of hope was that you could, Abraham, for example, was told he would have many heirs and a great land. And when he died, he had a son and one heir. He had two sons, but he had one heir, and he had a cave. But Abraham had hope because Abraham was able to look past his own generation. He was able to look past himself and see that the promise of God would be there. And so Abraham continued to obey God based on hope. In the New Testament, hope stands for Jesus. Everything a, a Christian thinks about when you think about hope is through the lens of Jesus. We look at our hope. Hope means eternal life. It means forgiveness of sins. It means um, Jesus is in the world with us, a living God. But there's reason to hold on to both sets of hope. As we look at the church and the children who we don't see as much anymore and the emptying pews, we have to sit in that Old Testament hope that Abraham had, that it's past our generation, which is why we continue to spread the word and why we continue to come to church. We are coming for the hope of a generation that's past us. And it's hard for us to do that as we see it changing from maybe how it was when we were younger, where the, it was fuller and more people were here. So we find that we lose hope in that, but we can't. We need to look past our generation and see that all these seeds that we plant and continue to plant will be growing. As we, keep, we need to keep that hope in front of us. We stand here in a time where it's been a lot of strange things happening in the world. Pandemics and all that brought. <laughs> Our lives have changed. It is different. And yet there is some element of holding on to hope that this will be done and we'll move on. We don't know when now. We're a little bit less uh, sure that it'll happen tomorrow. But if you do look back into the past and all the other pandemics, they have about a four-year reign. And we do hold hope that this will change. So what you need to do is combine them. Combine the hope that we have that things will change, but we put Jesus in the middle of that. And we put 
Jesus in the middle of that hope that even if things don't change, Jesus is there. And it's through Jesus that we have eternal life, that we have forgiveness of sins, that we live and breathe and have our being. For that we give God.
merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your, your will, will be done, done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, and the power, and the glory, 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 and